Hey, thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. Today I have a hybrid with a problem that I've never uh, come across, so I'm excited to share this, uh, this testing with you. So I have a 2000, uh, before I do that, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell, you get notified of all my future content, which you definitely don't want to miss. Let's get to this hybrid problem. All right, so we got a 2013 Lexus ES300H front wheel drive with the big 2.5 liter engine. And it has uh, no check engine light, which is weird because in, uh, in Toyotas, in Priuses and all that, they set a check engine light, uh, Nissan's too. So anyways, this one only had the, the hybrid lights on, uh, warning lights. So we got uh, in the HV ECU, we have a P0AA6. That's Apple, Apple six. Hybrid battery voltage system isolation fault. Now what that means is that the computer knows that there, so there's high voltage, uh, there's high voltage in the battery and then high voltage carries along the cables and also to the inverter. So the computer knows if there is not the proper voltage at each end, it has all these different checks because let's say one of the orange cables along the frame gets pierced and it hits the ground. Uh, if it hits the ground, the, the chassis, the body, and you touch it, then anywhere on the car, you could, you could die from the voltage. Uh, so anyways, it's very, very important. So in this one here, uh, you also need to look at the subcode. And you're like, subcode, what is that? The way you find a subcode is when you go into your codes in Lexus and Toyota, when you go into your code, it will give you the code. In this one, it's a POAA6. That's it. That's all I'll tell you. Now, if you go into freeze frame, the freeze frame tells you the subcode. Now, the subcode's very important in the flow chart, and the subcode in this one is a 526. Now, you want to do a full code scan because one of the possible causes is the AC system. So you want to make sure that there's no other faults in a a core, uh, in the high voltage system anywhere in the vehicle so you're gonna do a full code scan and you're gonna scan it this one it had like a master window switch and some TPMS codes but this was the only code and then freeze frame was 526 now I'm gonna show you the flow chart for uh, for this and we're gonna get into testing this now before we get into this I want to show you something that is very important now if you're trying to test this yourself if you're a technician if uh, if you're doing this yourself you need to make sure that your meter can read that we have cat two cat two cat three okay so mine can do a thousand seven hundred and fifty you need to make sure uh, seven hundred and fifty AC one thousand DC now that's very very important now the multimeter does not do you any good without leads well if you do not have leads that are stamped with that then don't even try to test this now these are cat you can see right there, it is 1000 volts, cat three. Now, if you don't have this, don't even try. Don't even try because if you have a meter that and you don't have leads, as soon as you touch any high voltage with this, then you're gonna have big problems. Uh, you could die, they could melt, all kinds of stuff. If you use a meter that is not rated for this, it can become a plasma bomb and can explode in your face. So don't even try. So that is the disclaimer I have also also, I'm not wearing gloves. Uh, the flow chart tells you to put gloves on. Um, you should wear gloves if you don't feel safe. Uh, but I'm not wearing gloves. That does not mean that you cannot or you should not. That is at your discretion. So here is right here. This is why you need the subcode. You have POAA6. It doesn't do you any good without a direction. As you can see, there's 526, there's 611, 612, 613, 614. Now they all come over here and they all have different um, different issues. This one is the inverter and converter. This one is the transaxle. This one is the junction block, air conditioning system. And now we get up to the top one, which is the one I have. This one could be the transaxle, could be the inverter. It could be the frame wire. It could be the air conditioning system or the high voltage battery, the battery smart unit. It could be a lot of things. Now you understand why the subcodes are so important. Now here we go, it's a POAA6 only. This is why I said you need to scan the whole car. 
So we're gonna go to A. A says go to next step. And this one says turn the scan, to scan tool on, access freeze frame, and look for the INF code, which is the subcode. And you're gonna come down here. And this one says, so you see all these 526 and 614 and 613, 12, 11, or only 526. I'm gonna come over here and we're gonna follow A, which is going to be continue to next step. Now this is where we're gonna be removing the service plug. I'm not gonna show you the obvious thing, which is pulling off this cover here. That goes right there over the battery. You're gonna pull that off. Uh, then you're gonna have a cover here and it's gonna look like this. You're gonna have two 10 millimeter nuts. You're gonna pop this off. You're gonna disconnect your negative battery first. Take this off. Last time I did a Nissan, I got totally ahead of myself in filming and I forgot to disconnect the battery. And I had a little, some sparks when I was disconnecting the 12 volt from the high voltage battery then from here you're going to have the service plug and you're going to just pull you're going to pull it out like to the side and then you're going to pull it this way and then it's going to pull out um the reason you have to pull it this way is so you can't accidentally bump it you can't just push it and it accidentally pops and disconnects you have to actually unlock it before you can unpull it and when it gets like this you'll pull it out uh make sure that's out and I usually wait about uh, 10 minutes uh, for the capacitors to discharge. So the next step is going to be uh, checking the hybrid uh, transaxle motor assembly. So we're going to be coming down here. We're going to remove the service plug. Uh, right there is where I told you be sure to wear insulated gloves. Uh, we're going to come down here and we're going to remove the inverter cable. Let me just go show you. Okay, so you'll notice that uh, prior to this I showed that I had these covers off, which is a little uh, Phillips screw. Uh, this is my first time ever messing with this style, uh, so I wasn't familiar. Uh, that screw holds this cover to the plastic insulator that covers the bolts. Now those bolts are what you're going to be removing. So we're going to go ahead and pop these off. So it's always the hardest part when you're, uh, when you're doing a flow chart or messing with a system for the first time um, and understanding exactly what everything is unless you work for a dealership uh, where you have access to everything. A bracket here that goes over that connects to here and it connects to there uh, you'll have to pull the tab like that and slip it off and the same thing over here so once we've undone these we're gonna go ahead and lift these up and we're gonna be disconnecting both of them so the, uh, you're going to disconnect the cables and uh, the one, the longer cable here that's on the driver's side. Uh, we're going to be, so it looks like number one is the generator cable. So if you look here, it's telling us that we're testing the number one cable, which is the generator cable. So we're going to, we're going to scroll here and you're going to use your mega ohm meter that has up to 500 volts capacity or able to measure that. And we're going to come down here and you can see WVU. Okay, step one is gonna be uh, checking this. So this is shield ground, this cover here, and these are your wires. So your, the first test is going to be checking continuity from here to there and there and there. Now this is where you should have no continuity. If you have continuity, that means there's a leak in the wire. So no continuity, you're checking from here to here to here to here. Now I'm not gonna walk you through if you have continuity uh, because that's not what I'm chasing. So I have no continuity between here, 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 and here. And the same thing, and so the first, the first test is gonna be checking this wire. From here, those three. Then you're gonna go from the block to here. So you're looking for a connection between any three of these high voltage cables and engine ground or shield ground. Underneath this is a shield that connects over here. The next step, if you have no continuity, is gonna be go to this cable and do the exact same thing. I have no continuity between any of these wires, body ground or shield ground on either connector. So next step is gonna be removing this cover here and removing this plug. We're gonna go over here, just move these out of the way gonna get a bungee get those out of the way so I'm gonna disconnect this uh, looks like two tens and we should be able to pull this cover off and we're trying to get that connector off underneath same principle here uh, you have these two uh, two screws you're gonna leave those in you're gonna remove those uh, there's a big fat fuse in there um, 
but when you remove these screws, one of the screws goes all the way down through uh, this lower connector here. And so we should be able to pull this connector out, which is what we're gonna be testing. All right, a little tricky to get off. Uh, you can see right here where the hole is. That's where the screw, the, this screw goes all the way through to that connector. I'm a little tricky to get off. You have to put something on both sides and wiggle it uh, kind of hard. I, I just pulled the high voltage cables over. Uh, I guess to make it easier, I could have taken this duct off and I would have been able to pull them more. But anyways, we got it off. Now let's test it. So it looks like we have ACPE and ACPB. Uh, we're doing the exact same thing. We're testing these uh, to uh, body ground and shield ground. And we should have three mega ohms or higher. So I'll show you what this looks like testing. So this is shield ground right there where the screw goes. So we're just gonna go there to that wire and we're gonna go there to that wire. And then we're gonna do the, and I already did the same thing with body ground and we had no, uh, no continuity. But you can see my meter, open, 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 open. For the previous step, you didn't have to take this cover off. You just had to remove this one screw to get the connector out uh, and then to get the uh, and then you have to undo this screw right here uh, to get the other so now we're going to be removing that connector there the backside one it's a s1 so we're going to disconnect this and we're going to push that connector out all right to get this one to pop out you have to undo that clip down there uh right right straight down there you got to undo that clip uh, it's a little tricky to get off, but when it pops, it'll pop. So the next step, we're going to be checking this terminal of the high voltage fuse to body ground. Let me see if I can uh, try to do this with... Okay, I'm shoved into body ground. Uh, and, the, and the resistance values are getting lower and lower. So from here, we have 12. So let's let this resistance uh, stabilize. So it's getting lower and lower. So let's see where our probably doing this because I don't have a great great connection to body ground because I'm filming this looks like my meter shut off let me try it over so there you can see we have 2.083 mega ohms so now let's go look at where we're supposed to be 2.0 mega ohms okay and so now when we look here uh, we're allowed one mega ohm or higher. So we have two, so we're good to go. All right, now that we're gonna be doing this to the same exact thing to this S1 connector here, uh, we're gonna be going from shield ground to both terminals inside the connector and also body ground to inside the connector. I can't show that, it's too hard to pull this thing down. All right, next step uh, is gonna require a little more time. I just got some more diag time because I didn't know it was gonna go this far. We're gonna be going back to the battery now uh, and removing some covers. So we have to take the back seat out. I'm not gonna show you how to do that, but let me get that off. After, after you have the back seat out, you gotta come over here on this side. Uh, it took me a minute to find it because uh, it's not in any pictures and I had to go through uh, multiple aspects. But anyways, so this corner here, you're gonna undo this one bolt on the passenger side of the front. I'm gonna pull this cover back um, and this orange connector here and disconnect that. That's to the smart junction box. And you're gonna come back here. And we're just gonna go from body ground to each terminal. And we're looking for 10, 10 mega ohms or higher. All right, so my resistance readings were OL. And so you can see right here, uh, not sure if that's a used uh, paint marker. Sure looks like it to me. But anyways, it says to replace the smart battery unit. So if you wanted to just replace the one part, that is the battery smart unit right there. On the passenger side of the battery, that was the one connector we disconnected right there. And then there's also a connector that comes in from the outside. So this thing needs a high voltage battery, but that is the, that is the problem right there. So that module in there is the battery smart unit or a battery voltage sensor. 
uh, the customer's not fixing it, so we won't be able to see a, a confirmed fix. But this is what the flow chart led us down to, replacing this unit, which you can replace separate. And I think I saw it was for under $300 on a repair link, which shows a dealer price. So in this case, the code was pointing towards what appeared to be a leak in the high voltage system. I was pretty excited. I thought we were gonna find, you know, find a leaking cable or something like that. And all it was was making sure that there was no leak so it could say it was a bad module or inverter or whatever. So kind of bummed on the way it went, but you know, here we go. All right, so with that code, it could be the inverter, it could be the transmission, it could be transaxle, it could be the wiring, it could be uh, a lot of different things. But in this case, it was the smart battery unit which I previously said was the battery. Uh, that battery smart unit is very available. Uh, we looked it up, it was like, I think under $300 from the dealer, I believe. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it was readily available, uh, which means that it's a pretty common failure and it's, and it's serviceable, external of the battery. So when you Google it, there's like a ton of places to get it. Uh, if you were gonna replace it, I would strongly recommend you get an OEM one uh, because it's a pretty important uh, component. It's sensing voltage, which a lot of other companies, they just don't make the electronics as good a quality. And then therefore you could end up having the same code just by replacing it with, you know, another unit. So thanks for watching the video. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell. You get notified of all my future content, which you definitely don't want to miss. I'll see you next time.